she always has amazing stuff. Oh, I got it. Um, so Alicia's texted me um, and she says she has a lot of stuff for the free table. So it's going to be banging this time. Also, I'm going to talk about later, but Corey Keller, I think is Corey here. Corey, did you see her on Instagram D stash? She gave a few things away, but then most of it, she says she's bringing to the free table. Also, I'm doing a huge D stash because I had to move everything out of my guest bedroom and I'm bringing it to the free table. My stuff's not as cool, but there's a lot of vintage stuff if you're in a weird vintage stuff. So, um, I don't know, the free table's gonna be hot, hot, hot on Saturday. All right, I'm gonna start the slide and I'm just gonna ramble for a couple minutes and then Ruby Star is gonna talk. All right, let's turn this off. All right, PMQG 2022 Guild Goals. Our focus, our focus for this year is to increase member participation while enhancing a sense of community and our efforts to boost morale together. So that is our focus. And that is what our lens is when we look at things, making decisions about projects that we're gonna do. Um, you know, like the Ukraine blocks was such a great fit because that really boosts member participation. Uh, things like the free table, uh, the fidget quilts, we wanna increase participation. Um, that's why we are working to give so much support to small groups this year, because we wanna increase uh, member participation, third year of the pandemic, and morale is low all over the place. Uh, we want to create a safe space that helps members develop modern quilting skills through the scope of our guild values as we work to foster a sense of community and inclusion. We have a sponsor, uh, Modern Domestic. They gave us a a bunch of money and they're sponsored this year they also give all of our members a discount so um we really appreciate if you are in modern domestic to uh, let them know you're a member and even if you don't want the discount just tell them thank you uh, modern domestic is our sponsor this year oh business member spotlight this is exciting uh, the business member spotlight this uh, this month is Tammy Booth from the Portland Quilt Supply. She already gave a generous donation to um, help us in collaboration with the Rainbow Quilts. She's going to be here after the speaker. She's got some great prizes, and she's doing a little mini uh, talk about um, uh, quilting myths, I think. So day and free table. Um, Ruby Star Society panel is here this evening, and they are not doing a um, workshop, so we're holding our so day and free table this Saturday because there's no workshop. May 21st from 10 to 4. This might be our last so day for um, the season. We might shut her down and have a, just a free table in the summer because it's summertime, and we're all locked up all winter because it rains so much here, and then we might resume our so day stuff in the fall. So if you miss this one... Too bad, so sad. You might miss out. Oh, May 21st, 10 to 4, it's at the Millen Fabric Store, the Portland location um, off McLaughlin. Beverly Tymon, the small groups coordinator, everyone knows Beverly, she's super nice. She offered to do a stay home option. So there's a Zoom option and she has a list of supplies and some tutorials that she's going to be doing. Um, we also are going to try to live stream uh, the uh, Zoom room at the Sode just to see how things work because we're working on things. Um, just a heads up, I may try some new stuff. I went to the MQG leadership um, panel meeting thing last week. Other guilds are already doing hybrid and they gave me some tips and tricks. So we're gonna start incorporating those. So there is a free table in Sode. Oh, I talked about that. Elise Walsh is bringing stuff. If you know Elise Walsh, her stuff is hot and she's bringing a lot of stuff for us. Um, Corey Keller is also bringing stuff. I'm bringing stuff, it's not as cool, but it is vintage if you're interested. And also I got some bolts of fabric, of upholstery fabric and like stretchy um, velvet fabric um, from uh, Linus Quilts. Somebody donated to them and then they weren't quilting uh, fabrics. So I have several bolts of fabrics that I'm bringing to the free table. and. Um, Marcy's been collecting uh, stuff for the free table and there's just a lot of cool stuff. Okay, enough. I was just excited about it. I love free stuff. Okay, uh, library is back. Angel Van Note is our new librarian. She's doing a great job. You can pick up books at Sode or you can do a porch drop off of her house. If you haven't even perused the library catalog yet, I would suggest you do it. It's a great way to check out a book instead of buying one um, to build up your uh, skill set. We have a lot of great books in the library. So I really want to encourage you to check that out. Um, Angel's doing a great job and it was really kind of her to volunteer um, this year to be, take over as new librarian and um, just check out what she has. 
quilt retreat, Telecom Lodge. It is not camping. We actually had some feedback. People thought maybe it was like camping. It's actually not camping. It's a lodge with carpet and heat. It's really nice. We have four spots left four spots. Uh, it's a smaller group of 25. Meals are included. I'm gluten-free and allergic to like a bunch of things. It's no problem. It was like eight or 10 extra bucks. We're doing a smaller group of 25. Again, there's four spots left. This opens up to non-members the 20th, which is tomorrow. So if you haven't got your spot, um, get it soon. And if you do have a spot and you have a friend you want to come with, uh, buy a ticket tomorrow. So that's that. Scholarship info, uh, there's a scholarship planning committee that's been working on uh, just creating a scholarship policy. Um, that's gonna be coming out probably next month or two for the board to review. We're presenting it to the membership. I just wanna uh, reiterate again, the construct the present $5 coupon, that expires in August. And if you haven't used it yet, that will go into the scholarship fund. Also guest passes to our meetings, go to the scholarship fund. We do have an idea of creating a raffle of fundraiser quilt similar to the Ukraine blocks. Um, we need help. Can you help with that? Do you want to help lead that? We need help. Uh, merch sales, those go to scholarship fund. Those are coming soon. Um, Chris is working on a shirt and I'm really excited. It's a limited edition 2022 PMQG shirt and I'm really excited about it. Uh, I don't know what it is. Nobody knows what it is. Only Chris knows. So that'll be coming soon. Um, half of our WIP OFO club goes to it. Classified ads are five bucks. Those go to scholarship fund. If you have any questions about scholarship stuff or if you want to join the planning committee, just send us an email. Okay, Allison, just you didn't want to talk about the speakers for the speakers, but I just want to say Ben Venom is coming next next month in June, and we have some spots left. He's super cool. If you don't know who he is, look it up on Instagram. Um, so that, I just wanted to give that shout out real quick. Okay, I'm done talking. Now it's um, Marika's turn. Hi. So I'm going to share my screen. Um, Hi, guys. Bye. Bye. You can stay for the meeting if you want to. I mean, it's fun. You just welcome. You can welcome to stay if you want, babe. Let's, um, all right, Ruby Star panel discussion. Thank you so much. That was that was cool, dude. That was really cool. I think that's what's that the first panel discussion we've had all year. That was fun. That was lively. Ooh, programs preview. Ben Venom. We have thirteen spots left. Allison, uh, did you want to chat about this uh, with uh, the patch jacket that Ben Venom is going to teach us next month? Are you here, Allison? Al Allison wasn't able to make it this evening, oh. um, so I'm going to talk about this. Okay, you talk. Um, we have Ben Venom coming to our meeting next month. Um, he has this really um, intriguing um, applique um, process that he does. And um, he's gonna teach us about doing our own skull applique um, with upcycled fabrics. So um, there, uh, the class is $55 each and um, we've got some spots left, it's on Zoom. Um, and I think we might be you. his, he might be, we might be his first quilt guild because he usually just teaches at the arts, uh, college near him. So it might be his first quilt guild. So let's break them in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just right. want to mention, we do have 13 spots left. So, um, you know, um, it's been a tough year selling, um, spots for our workshops. Uh, you know, I think there are a lot of different reasons for that. Um, it is, uh, you can buy, you know, different workshops online from different people. So there's been some waxing and waning. So um, last month was our first month that we fully sold out of our workshops and they are priced so that when they sell out, we don't lose money. Um, so I just wanna say, if you could help us out as members, if you see this coming up on the Instagram feed or on their social media, if you would give it a reshare or a repost, invite your friends to come to the um to the uh to the workshops because if um how we're looking at now we're not selling out the workshops so if we're going to be selling less workshops we might start offering less workshops if that makes sense so just something to keep in mind that the board is looking at um you know we're very uh under we want to do our best job with the guild's money and we don't want to invest money where it's going to be like not spent wisely so we're feeling that stress so um please sign up for the workshops if you're thinking about it and even if you don't want to if you could just share a post with other friends um that would be great also this one is coming up after that one do you want to talk about it marika just this one i was like i didn't put all of them just this next one yeah. it's so cool yeah we'll have um sheila frampton cooper doing um a lecture and workshop um 
for us in July um, and looking forward to that as well. Um, she does some beautiful work. So um, yeah, July, July programs as well. So yeah. Okay, fall retreat. Let's see, um, is Angie right here? Angie, do you wanna talk about the fall retreat? I definitely want people to know that it goes on sale tomorrow for non-members. We have four tickets left. I'm here, I'm here. Okay, I'll mute you, go ahead. Um, am I muted? No, okay. Hi everybody. Um, yeah, we have our fall retreat happening at uh, Tilikum Lodge um, in September, uh, September 15th, uh, which is a, is it Thursday to Sunday? Is that how it goes? Yeah, it's Thursday night to Sunday. And I just wanna say that the price includes everything. So it's every meal, every snack, anything you want. So it's really an amazing price if you consider that all you have to do all weekend is so. I mean, you can do whatever you want. You can walk around the lake, you can go on a, on a shopping trip with your friends nearby, but uh, there's lots of places to go shopping. Um, you know, it's a, it's a drive, but it's not far. Uh, you know, there's lots of things to do, but if you want to do nothing but hang around in your pajamas and slippers for four days and have people feed you, it is amazing. And um, yeah, and the food's good too. I, you know, I know a lot of people are afraid of that, but I'm a picky eater and I, I've been really pleased uh, over the years. I mean, you know, we haven't been in two years. Anyway, I'm so excited. I can't believe we haven't sold out, but we haven't. We have, uh, what is it, six tickets left, I think? Six, six spaces, I think. Um, Four tickets left. Oh, four, only four. Okay. So it goes on sale to non-members on May 20th. And I'm certainly going to tell my friends who are not quilters. Uh, so they're not part of the quilt guild. Um, so those four tickets are going to go quick unless you guys buy them up. I highly recommend it. Um, also, if you have any questions or anything, feel free to reach out to me. Um, here, I'll put my email address in the chat. Because uh, I've been many times and we have a lot of things planned. So you might have, you know, maybe personal questions that you want to ask about sleeping arrangements or what the place looks like or anything like that. Because one of the people I was talking to recently, she pointed out that she didn't like camping. And I thought that was hilarious because we were calling it Camp Tillicum, which is what the space is called Camp Tillicum, but it's really a lodge. And then it made me realize, oh no, maybe lots of people think that it's actually camping, but it's not camping at all. Now it's not a fancy spa, but there is a hot tub. <laughs> and I plan on getting in it. <laughs> all right, well, feel free, like I said, feel free to reach out to me personally. I left my email in there. Um, if any of you guys have you know, a question about it or something you wanna say. Thank you so much, Angie. Um, and we did have um, uh, a bunch of things um, planned for it. I just wanted to share real quick. Let's see if, oops, previous, drew uh, back. Oh, wait, yeah. I think this slide, yeah. See, this is why I need two screens, guys. Okay, so it's not lodging. Um, you can wear slippers all weekend. We're gonna have a game of left, right, center with Ruby Star Fat Quarters or Cotton and Steel if you have any. Uh, we're doing a pillow swap with ex asking people no extras, just make a normal pillow. It's gonna be done white elephant style, so you can uh, steal it. And um, let's see, I have, I want to show you all where to find it on the website really quick. So where to find the web page for things. Um, and maybe Chris is gonna change this eventually I don't know but you find it through the calendar so you go to the calendar and then look on the side look on the side there it is rainbow challenge sisters outdoor show hand pick fall quilt retreats that's where it's hiding that's where all the info is hiding it's all here we're talking about stuff it's got the address um things like this don't worry if you're gluten-free I'm gluten-free it's gonna have stuff activities we're doing a charity project we're doing the puzzle box pattern um carpooling coffee shops things like that oh also I want to talk we're uh, doing the Astoria quilt retreat in Astoria it's 12 spots it's all information's here um so that's what I wanted to share there all right back to viewing the slideshow view Okay, this is like my my fifth show, and I'm I'm getting terrible <laughs> slowly. I think some people have felt like the bar was set normal that know me that like I, but some people made the bar. I want to stress like maybe the bar was set high that didn't know me like, just actually, no one else volunteered. 
Uh, okay, it's fall retreat. Oh, business member spotlight. All right, this is exciting. Uh, we're just getting our footing now uh, with the business member spotlights. Business membership is $50 a year, is it? I think it's or $55, $10 more. And then we highlight our business members. We have, I think, eight or nine business members this year. And Tammy Booth is from Portland Quilt Supply. She is our business member. And uh, Tammy, are you here? Do you want to unmute? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, great. I think I have four slides set up for you. So you just let me know when you want me to advance the slide. I'm going to put myself on mute. I thought about that. I was like, how do I cue? And I was like, I'll just, we'll just figure it out. We'll yeah, you got to tell me. And uh, Tammy has um, has some prizes, two prizes at the end. And I think she wanted uh, like Chris uh, to give them away. So Chris, I don't know if you came up with a plan, but um, <laughs> five minutes, you're on deck. Yep. <laughs> Thank you, Chris, by the way. Um, so yeah, I'm Tammy Booth. Uh, I'm a quilter, online quilt shop owner, and a mother of four. I also work full-time during the week. Um, I'm here to talk to you today about, you know, wearing my quilt shop owner hat and just kind of let you know, I run a small quilt shop in outer, um, out, outer Southeast Portland. It's online only near 122nd and Stark if you're looking for the, the gauge. Um, I offer free local porch pickup and you get my home address to pick up from my porch when you place an order. Um, so you can always pick up around here. As a Portland native, my heart's local. So I've got a section that's PDX Root. Um, you can shop the fabrics, the patterns from local makers to the Portland metro area. So I wanna make sure that I give them a good place um, where um, you're kind of spotlighting those local makers. And if you are a local maker um, and you are selling stuff, um, reach out to me because I'd love to carry you in my shop as well. I know we have a lot of talent here in the Quilt Guild. Um, so my relationship with quilting is probably best summarized by just a couple of statements, which is I started quilting in 2017. Um, I fell deeply in love, like all the way head first. It's my happy place. That's where I love to live. Um, when I first met other quilters, they meant really what um, meant well by sharing kind of their most important things or information that I needed to know. And it scared me terribly. And I wasn't confident in what I was making, which kind of leads me to a blog post that I'm now talking to you about, which is a mini talk on quilting rules. And <clears throat> I'm a big rule follower. Like it's hard for me to not follow rules. And I'll, I'll lead with that and then say, and um, also I used to be. Um, so I moved away from following the rules and it led me to like truly connecting, um, with really incredible makers. So, um, I started consuming all of these videos, reading books, blog posts, how to quilt. Um, if you want to read how I made my first quilt, there's a blog post for that. And it's, it's hilarious, um, because I had no idea what I was doing. And I'm so glad for that um, experience. Um, and it makes me much more comfortable not knowing what I'm doing when I try all the different techniques and we have different speakers on here as well. The key kind of takeaway is there's actually like very few real rules and a whole lot of personal preference refined by experience. And so I'll say that again, there's very few real rules for those of you that are just quilting or just this is your first quilt guild meeting. There's all the rules that you read, they're, they're not really rules. They're personal preference refined by experience. And so I highlight five on my blog post. The quarter inch rule, that's probably should be the only rule that you can stay consistent with because math makes things easier. However, if you stray away from that and you do it consistently, it actually isn't that big of a deal. Um, it just turns out a little different than what you expected. Um, happy accidents, right? Start or no start, I talk about that. The jury's out, it's again, how you feel about it. The pressing rule with steam or no steam. My blog post talks a little bit about that, but I personally uh, like steam and pressing um, and clappers because it makes things really flat for me. And then you should always close your rotary cutter. Um, and I think I note in the blog post, like do it right now. Um, if, if it's open, it's a danger. Um, I have four kids, so <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Um, good job. Everyone should have that closed all the time. Um, and then hand binding. I remember sitting in my first Quilt Guild meeting and um, a very well-meaning person told me, like, I always hand bind my quilts because I love um, the people I quilt for so much and I just put everything into it. And I heard that. And what I heard was, if I don't hand bind my quilts, then the person I give my quilt to um, is getting an inferior product. And my messaging around that is no, like machine buy and use your crazy stitches on your machine, like have fun. That person didn't mean that. And 
um, and the way that we connect together um, through like learning and growing and what we say around each other, it's really important to, um, to say, yeah, this is my personal preference and what I think, but I, you know, um, and so that's, again, my blog posts are really about my own experience and you can read the details there. Um, kind of the, now that you know about me or where I come from or how I got started, how I got connected, I just wanna talk a little bit about how we can connect together as a business member myself. Um, so I guess now would be next slide. All right, so there's the website, um, which is pdxquilts.com. That's where you can, you can shop, um, you can read the blogs. Uh, there's tons of links in there. Um, so you definitely see that there. The Facebook group is a great place where you can connect, um, but to be fully transparent, the best part of the Facebook group page has to do with finding out when I'm going live for the Facebook sales and then asking for me to show products on the Facebook live sales. So my fabric yardage starts as low as $8 a yard on the Facebook lives. And um, that means that, and sometimes it's even less, but if you ask for something to be shown on the Facebook live sale through the Facebook group and I show it on there, you're gonna get it at a discount. So you can kind of pick your own sales, which is super fun. Um, and, and you can ask to see those items. Um, I usually have a post up, but if not, no big deal. Um, but those are the three main ways that I interact. I do post on Instagram as well. Love to connect that way. But the interactive piece is Saturdays, two o'clock. All right. And then I think we got prizes coming up or coupon codes. Okay. Coupon codes. I, so that's the other thing you should know about me. I love deals, sales, and coupon codes like all the time. I've got some Ruby Star Society fabric in stock and you can get it, whatever I have in stock, 25% off. Um, but it, I, it's a limited amount of stock. So if you want it you should, and you want it 25% off, you should probably use the code sooner than later. Um, but it is good through the end of the month. Um, so you can grab that there. And then PMQG 20, um, you get 20% off of your first order as a PMQG member. And um, you just go on, use the code. Um, that's a special coupon uh, just for the PMQG members um, as well. And so you can also sign up for emails. And I don't, I'm really busy. Remember I told you I have a lot of, a lot of stuff going on. Um, so I'm not gonna send you too many emails, but the emails I do send you are gonna have, I'm going live on Facebook, here's the coupon codes, and I'm having a great 30% off sale, which has been cycling through every once in a while lately. Um, and when I do that, you definitely wanna get notice of that. Okay, now the two prizes. I'm so excited. I've got two prize bundles. They're um, four yard bundles, so each bundle is four yards of fabric. It is Harmony um, fabric uh, by Figo, and it's a, a linen cotton blend. Um, so I looked around, I thought, what, do I, what, what should I give away? What are people doing? Um, and Sarah had this great idea, like people are making bags, they're making totes, they're making other stuff. Like, let's, let's talk about, you know, about how we can do that. So I got um, a couple of these bundles and there's two of them. Um, and um, I'm, Chris has probably found a magic way to draw a name or figure out who gets a prize. Fingers crossed. Not quite magic, but we currently have 77 people on the call. So I'm just going to do a random number generator between one and 77. First number is 13. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's a lucky number. So that and is, uh, looks like someone in Canada, Bev Berzy Chilliwack. I'm assuming Canada because there's a comment. Ooh, yep. Yeah. Okay. Beth, we, uh, Nadia has a special uh, prize pack for you. I didn't get a picture of it. She has a whole bunch of prizes. Um, she's going to be sending you something, but we're going to save ourselves on shipping. So we dropped off a huge bundle last month or two months ago to Nadia. So Chris, you're not off the hook yet. You have to pick two more people that oh, hopefully good. have okay. U.S. addresses because Tammy only sends to U.S. addresses. Does that make sense? Oh, oh but thank you. <laughs> yeah, Bev. Yeah, I'm excited. And I, she has so much stuff. It might be too much stuff. I'm sorry, but it's really cool stuff. You can never have too much stuff. Okay. Okay. All right. Next number is 49. So give me a minute while I count that out. This is gorgeous. I'm making, um, I'm making tote bags for grocery store tote bags this Saturday at the, um, at the Sode. That's my focus and goal because I just cannot, it's, there's no reason for me not to have more. It's five cents at the market. You know what I mean? I'm embarrassed. I'm a quilter. I should have more in my car. 
All right, next one is, I think it's Elise Myers, M. Elise in the chat. Elise? That's me, and it's Monica. Yay. Oh, it's Monica. Okay. <laughs> ah, congratulations, yeah. Monica. All right, one more lucky person. Chris, are you ready? 55. Luckily, I'm already down the list. So let's see. Uh, 50, 51, 52, 54, 55 is Maureen Hislop. Ooh, Maureen. Congratulations. Oh my God, that's me. <laughs> I was eating dinner. <laughs> Oh, that's so cool. Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. Tammy, did you get those names? I did, but I'm probably going to need some help on um, figuring out emails or connecting. Uh, maybe if someone can send me a message or, or the um, Monica Marine, if you can just chat me your email address, I can send you a message and figure out how to get, get your okay, stuff. Okay, thank you. Oh my gosh, that is so great. Thanks. <laughs> Congratulations. I'm jelly. Those are gorgeous fabrics. That's all they look so they're gonna look so nice together. Mm. Okay, Tammy, or um, I think that's I think that's it. Did you have anything else you wanted to, to um, share with us? Thank you so much. No, I think that's it. Thanks for having me this month. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you Tammy. so much. And Tammy was also really instrumental in getting us all of those um, cottons for the rainbow challenge. It was really, really great. Um, I was just, uh, I don't know. Thank you, Tammy. That was really cool. All right. So next up, we have Marika. Marika, are you ready to talk? Okay. I'm going to mute. Let me unmute myself. So um, we wanted to say a few words about a recent social media post about abortion access. That post was about an important issue that affects many, many of our members, and we stand by it. For those who felt that this was a personal attack, that was not our intention, and please accept our apologies. We did not attack anyone except for SCOTUS. Abortion is healthcare. PMQG has a long history of posting about important issues to our members, including those that could be seen as divisive and political. We love all of our members of all faiths, including our Catholic members, and we want everyone to be included. We actively partner with Catholic charities through our butterfly boxes and PMQG Gives Back program, and we will continue to do so. Thanks, Marika. We appreciate that. So next we have the PMQG DIA committee. Um, Kimberly or Susan, did you guys wanna take this slide? I will take the first one. I apologize Thanks. for lighting, hold on. Okay, uh, so we had our um, DEIA committee meeting. It was a really great meeting. And I think one of the primary reasons for that is after our educational opportunity with uh, Melissa Deleon Mason, one of the things she stressed was about um, establishing goals for our DEIA committee. And so that was what we focused on in our last meeting. We just did a lot of brainstorming. We had some amazing ideas, some great energy in that meeting. And so um, our plan now is to collect all the ideas that we um, we're able to share in that meeting and then create some actionable next steps. So one of the things that we're talking about is in our next DEIA committee meeting to start um, having maybe breakout sessions to really um, drill down into some of those ideas and talk about how we make them happen. So that meeting will be Wednesday, June 6th. That's a day earlier than our normal cadence at um, 6 p.m. So all are welcome, please come. And um, I will also mention one of, the, uh, one of the focuses that we mentioned was how do we focus more on solutions? You know, um, we have several methods for um, um, submitting grievances and things like that. This is more about as a committee, how do we not only kind of like point out issues, but come to the table with potential solutions in mind. For those of you that are, um, uh, I saw a question in the chat, DEIA is diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility. And so um, if you're not familiar, our guild is really basically a tra trailblazer in this space. We're one of the very few guilds, probably the first, I believe, to actually have a DEI, not just a DEI committee, but DEIA, 
And also the Modern Quilt Guild, the umbrella parents organization, if you will, also has a DEI committee, which um, I'm one of the members of that as well. And so this is just one of those uh, ways to kind of make sure that we as a guild, we've had um, questions and concerns in the past about things like how do we build more diverse membership and retain those members, things like that. So that's one of the main ideas around having this committee in place. Thank you. We'll go to the next slide. And I believe that'll be Susan. Um, thank you, Kimberly. I really appreciate that. I'm really very honored to co-chair the DIA committee in support of Kimberly. And uh, our recent meeting was so productive and positive. It was really um, meaningful to talk through so many ideas for how to make our guild more inclusive, more equitable, uh, increase and importantly retain diverse members and uh, look to that lens and then as accessible as possible. So thank you to all who attended and are in this work with us. Um, we obviously still have lots to do, but we're in it together. Um, I wanted to share an update on our community activist sewing, um, which has been a wonderful project that um, if you've been to meetings in the last few months, you may have heard us mention the warm winter welcome drive, which collected cozy, soft, handmade blankets that um, we were able to share freely with members and non-members. And so far, our incredible team of over 75 folks have donated more than 200 blankets. Uh, 145 went to butterfly boxes, which as was mentioned briefly, Catholic Charities has an incredible program supporting um, Afghan refugees uh, and was able to take those blankets uh, to go directly to families. Um, we've also donated to Centennial Middle School to students at risk who may not have housing um, and to Portland Ho Homeless Family Solutions and several other recipients. Our newest one is Lutheran Community Services and like Catholic Charities, they directly support refugee families arriving from all over the globe. Um, they currently work most with Afghani, Ukrainian, and Somali refugee families, and they especially ask for blankets. So if you would like to make blankets, we still have tons of kits. If you picked up kits and haven't finished them, that's no problem. They're accepting them year round, and there's no deadline and no pressure for this project. It's free for anyone to use. Um, they would also love pillows, like couch pillows, and then they'd really like tote bags, um, light, fun, colorful patterns, um, utilitarian, they're interested in all of them, but uh, we found an amazing um, pattern on Ruby Star's website. I'm going to put the links to both of those, um, both their, that specific file for the tote bag, and then all of the free patterns that Moda offers. You can look through, and Ruby Star Society has a, probably at least a dozen um, to try, but this one is wonderful. It uses just five-eighths of a yard of fabric to make an, an incredibly um, versatile and stylish tote bag. Um, we'd be happy to have you join us. And then um, I see the bottom on my uh, slide is kind of slightly covered, but it's the email address to contact us is pmqggivesback at gmail.com. Just reach out to us anytime. We'd be happy to um, share all the tutorials that we have for blankets and other projects. And we just really appreciate the community that's come together to make these beautiful and incredibly useful things. Just building, building those connections in a lonely time has meant so much, so thank you. Um, and then the next slide is just um, our community activist sewing group usually meets once a month. And um, we'd love to have you come if you're available, but we're actually taking May off because in the US, um, it's Memorial Day weekend is the last weekend of the month and it's just a hard weekend for folks to commit to. So we wanted to look to June. We'll be meeting the last Saturday in June, the 25th from two to four Pacific. We'd be thrilled to have you join us. Just email the, us at the same PMPG gives back email at gmail.com if you have any questions. And again, this is open to non-members. So if you have a good friend who's interested in doing more and going deeper with their sewing and activism, we'd be thrilled to welcome them too. So please spread the word and we'll be posting a reminder on PMPG social media the week of and look forward to seeing you then. Thank you. All right, Marsha, are you here? Do you want to talk about this? Yes, I would love to. Thank you. Uh, so um, 
I've been a Guild member since the very beginning. Um, I was at that first meeting back in 2010, and the Guild is really important to me. And I just wanted to share that projects like this, where we're lots of members are participating together. Um, that's really my favorite thing about my guild. I really love this. And Sarah, you know, you mentioned uh, one of the goals of the guild is to be participation. Um, it is especially important right now. We're at home so much more. We don't see each other as much. Um, so I'm just really grateful for the guild and grateful to everyone who participated in this project. Um, the quilt is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, the photos look nice, but they don't do it justice. Um, so I am going to be at the So Day this weekend, probably only for about an hour between 10 and 11. I want to check out the free table and I get a chance to bring the quilt. So if you can stop by and see it in person, it's really amazing. Um, Susan, can you go to the next slide? Okay, so. We're not done yet though. Now's the time to really be fundraising. We've got a little less than two weeks left. May 31st is the deadline for donations. And it's really easy. You can give as little or as much as you want to any nonprofit that's serving people in Ukraine. But that's a lot. So uh, what I thought I would do was suggest a few of the nonprofits that I really like. So they're up there on your screen. Um, if you want to um, consider giving a donation to any of them. <clears throat> oh, also I want to mention um, on the left, this uh, photo of this quilt block really shows Anne-Marie's beautiful quilting. And Anne-Marie did a one day turnaround, amazing, fantastic job. Thank you, Anne-Marie, it looks wonderful. Um, so, um, oh, so donations by May 31st, and here's how you guys can all help. I've shared this with all my friends and family, and that's brought in a lot of donations. And like everything else, the more of us that participate, the better we're gonna do for Ukraine. So if you could share it with family and friends, social media, emails, in person, whatever, we'll be more successful the more we all really work together on this. And um, don't forget, we can email, we email, we can mail the quilt anywhere in the US or Canada. So it's not just local Portland people. So, you know, share this with people who are out of town. Um, after you make a donation, just email some sort of receipt, either a screenshot, a PDF, a photo of your receipt to pmqggivesback at gmail.com and you'll be included in the opportunity to win. Thank you so much, everybody, and hope to see you Saturday at So Day. Thank you so much, Marsha. I think people really needed this, and you did just, it was such a kind community service project. It was a tight turnaround to get you those blocks, and people just yeah. sewed such beautifully detailed ones. Like, this is such a morale booster, and I just, I can't thank you enough. Thank you so much thank for you. making this happen. Thank you. All right, next slide. We have Charity Quilts uh, program. Uh, I'm not sure if Kath Hall is here today, but I did I did make a video. Want to see I am it? Here. I'm here, Sarah. I made a video. I made a video of your, your quilts. It's a quick <laughs> video. It's 20 seconds long. I couldn't put any sound with it, but um, Kath Hall sent me some pictures of Charity Quilts that she has um, that are finished that are going off to their uh, new homes. And um, I only I made a video with a couple of them. Oop. Let me see, oh, man, I'm not good at tech. We've mentioned that though, right? There we go. Boop, pause. Oh, wait. I think that's good. All right, Kath, you go ahead. Okay, I'll, I'll keep it brief. Uh, some of those, those were just some of the 20 odd quilts that went out last month to both Dawn Becker and um, Hospice. Uh, so we had a really good month last month, which was Great. Um, this month on the 26th, on Thursday, we are doing our first in-person uh, charity sew day at Modern Domestic in nearly two years, um, or over two years. I've lost track of time. But um, Chris has set up a, a way that you can log in and book a spot 
Um, we've got six machines, um, so six spots to sew, and then we've also got some cutting and some other bits. And the sessions, it's from 11 to 4, and we've broken the day up into two sessions. You can sew all day just by booking both sessions, um, but we wanted to just sort of get a handle on in COVID times, you know, the number of people coming in and, and doing this, but we're sewing in person. So I'm really excited about that. And our hope is if this, uh, this goes well this month, we'll do it every month. Um, Modern Domestic has offered us a space every month. So that's really exciting. And that's the Alberta Street store, um, not the Lake O store. And then a couple of days after that, we're still doing the Saturday drop off on the 28th at my house. Um, so if you want to pick up anything um, to sew or to bind or to quilt um, or want to drop off any finished quilts or just want to drop off and say hi, um, our doors open from uh, 10 to 1 on Saturday and the address is on the website. Thank you so much, Kath. People are excited about this. It's, it feels like it's ten, been 10 years. Like it's, it, it really does. If, honestly, at least five, like I'm uh, uh, five, I, five years. Oh, and um, yeah, I just saw uh, a message from, I didn't realize that one of my do good stitches fellow persons, Christy is in the guild. And that was one of the, um, this is a reminder. Sorry, talking to. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Alexis talking to me. Um, one of the do good stitches quilts is uh, in amongst the ones that uh, uh, went to hospice this month. So um, nice. Yay. And then um, also too, oh, I have you. Um, I think you're doing Camp Erin this year. So are you? No, actually, Camp Erin. I found out today. Camp Erin nationwide has decided to be a day camp. Um, so they're not collecting quilts because they're not having any kids sleep over this year. Um, so they're doing two days. Um, so the kids show up, do the day and then and go back to their house. But they are pretty confident that next year, <laughs> next year they will be ready to go. So I've kept quilts aside that we've made um, for Camp Aaron and I'll just hold on to them. Um, Perfect. For another year. Yeah. Because they take the quilts. But, uh, so yeah, that's that's all I've got. Thanks, Kath. We really appreciate that. All right, next slide. Boop. Wait, wait, what are we doing here? Oh man, I suck. It's just there we go. Ha! Nadia, are you here? I think Nadia said she was gonna be late, but I think she is here. I'm here, can you hear me? Yes, I'm gonna I'm gonna mute you talk. Okay, great. So um, this is from our initial call out a few months ago about folks, folks who did not live in Portland who might want to be involved in a charity project. And we actually got something together, which is fabulous. So we're going to call ourselves PMQG Charity Beyond Portland, and that's going to be our hashtag. The lovely Deborah Thompson in California is our co-lead, and she's an organizer extraordinaire. Um, she, she's really great at this kind of stuff. I've worked with her with some of this kind of thing before. And I'd really like to thank Thank Kath Hall for some initial input on um, how to run this and advice. And as you can see, our first round, we are using her generously <laughs> provided free pattern of the wonky stars, which I think folks had lots of fun um, using and, and making blocks for. So we have 11 Beyond Portland members with this uh, project. We have three quilters, two in British Columbia and one in California, and many block and uh, completed top makers. Our donation sites are to be determined right now. Um, we're going to wait and see how things kind of fall out from this initial um, this, this initial start to see how many we actually get. Our goal is to get um, three quilts uh, every two months. So the people who are making blocks are making eight blocks every two months, shipping them to the quilters um, or a completed top to the quilter. And uh, we're going from there. So donations to be determined. If you are interested in this, or if you uh, heard about it before, but uh, you know maybe didn't get around to emailing us about it, you can still join our e just 
email the guild, Portland Modern Quilt Guild at gmail.com. And I'm sure we can find more ways to use blocks and uh, quilters as well. And just on the side, there are some lovely, lovely donations. Top, uh, that flimsy was made by Sue, looks fabulous. I just received blocks today in the mail from Arita, gorgeous blocks and some bottom blocks uh, there from uh, Liz as well. So, so glad to start seeing them come in and we're all pretty excited about this project. And thank you for everyone who's uh, put their name forward. Thank you. Those look great, Nadia. That is super cool. I'm so glad. I know how much um, effort we wanted to put in this and it definitely plays into our theme of, you know, wanting to get people involved and that's why we have a quilt guild so that we could all do things and make blocks together. So thank you so much. All right, next slide. Uh, work in progress circle. Is this Renee or Nadia? What do you guys, are you guys, did you guys, uh, Renee, are you here? Renee said she was going to speak, but if she's not here, I can, I can speak for it as well. I can't see the chat when I'm sharing my screens. I don't know who's here. I've, I've been looking and I couldn't find her and I was hoping she was under a different name. But anyway, I can briefly speak on this. Renee is the lead, um, which is fabulous. Um, I believe 19 members with nearly 200 goals, 31 goals completed. Um, there's a 50-50 prize drawing at the end of the year. And if you haven't signed up and you're curious, there's more information on the website. You can add goals at any time. Um, and there is a prize drawing tonight that I actually uh, did organize ahead of time. I did a random number generator and then counted down through the entries of completed goals um, the, from the total amount of completed goals that have been submitted. And the winner that um, the random generator chose yesterday was Casey Manley. So congratulations. Oh, congrats. Casey. And um, I'm gonna work with Kathleen to get a prize out uh, to you. So. Thank you so much. Ah, thanks, Nadia. Um, yeah, you know, uh, like uh, we've already talked about before, um, the work in progress circle, it's just $2 per goal. And then half of that goes into the scholarship under the air and the other half goes to the prize winner. So think about that. Oh yeah, I wanna talk about this. This is me, free table plus soda. It's gonna be bangers. It's gonna be so cool. I mean, I'm saying you don't have to come in. So and you don't have to hang out if you don't want to. If, but I mean, cruise by that free table. Corey is bringing us stuff. If you saw her stuff, be stash on Instagram. Yeah, she's bringing it. And Elise Walsh is bringing her stuff. Her stuff is fire. I'm bringing stuff. I wouldn't be as excited about it unless you're excited about vintage fabric because I have a lot of vintage fabric that I'm bringing and um, a lot of apparel fabric that um, we got from Linus Project. Um, so I'm really excited about this free table. Our next free table might be in July and it might be outdoors so if you like to stock up on the free table this is your chance um our next so day might be in the fall so if you miss this one might be missing out babes okay so there's library books angel's gonna be there we have fidget kits um we're doing the fidget kits uh quote project i'm gonna be talking about later in the evening so we got kits you can just pick up um huge g stash happening um i was gonna get pictures there's some really fun fabrics that's already been dropped off on marcy's porch if you have fabric you want to drop off you're just stashing too the address for marcy's front porch is in the members only section so you can go to the members only section and just drop stuff off on our porch. And then afterwards we donate everything. I believe we're going to scrap this time because scrap said they're taking all our stuff. So I'm pretty excited about that. So hopefully we'll see you guys on Saturday, May 21st. And if you don't want to come to the so day or you can't or whatever, any reason, Beverly Timon, like I talked about earlier, is hosting an at home so day on Zoom. So we're opening up the Zoom room. Um, it's going to be the same hours from 10 to 4. The link for that is in the members only section. And she's got some tutorials and fun things planned. So like, like hang out with Beverly. Might be fun too. I like Beverly. She's fun to hang out with. Ooh, rainbow mini challenge. Um, Casey, are you here? You want to talk about this? This is this is your month, baby. It's time to shine. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, I'm going to mute. You talk. Awesome. So um, I think all of you should have gotten an email from me with details about drop-offs, um, but if you did not, let me know. Um, oh my gosh, you guys, the quilts look so good. I have a whole stack in my house and I'm just overwhelmed with beauty. Um, but to get your finished quilts to us, um, Modern Domestic Quilt Locations were so kind to be a drop point as well as cool cottons. Um, and then for those of you who are out of state, mail them to me. My address should be in the members only section. If not, drop me a note and I will send you my address. Um, and then I'm still working through, I will email out the um, waiver form. I'll also have some printed out copies at the so day so you can fill them out and sign them there if, um, 
Oh my God, Angie, seriously, like I'm in progress. It's fine. You will get there. Um, <laughs> it's fine. Um, so technically, yes, the deadline is this weekend. We are hanging quilts at Powell's on the third. Um, so please get them done this weekend. Um, and if something happens, I will make a couple exceptions here and there. Monday is totally fine, but like, please don't hand me a quilt the day before. <laughs> That's not cool. And the modern domestic and cool cottons drop offs are done after this weekend. We're not going to ask them to be drop points for more than about a week. That's they're really awesome and allowing us to like hold our stuff at their shops for a week, but they are busy, busy. So um, <clears throat> nothing beyond then, um, but shoot me a note if you're thinking you're gonna squeak off, like squeak in a little bit after the drop points are closed and we can work something out. Um, <clears throat> yes, there will also be a drop off at the so day um, and I will be there in person collecting your beautiful quilts and ooing and awing over them all. Um, I won't be there until a smidge afternoon, um, but I'll work with Sarah and I think we'll have a little drop point. Um, and then the super exciting thing is that we're doing a little opening celebration on Saturday, June 4th. Just a little celebration. We can walk through, see all of our beautiful quilts together. Um, and there's going to be a prize for people's choice. So we're going to put up these super cool QR codes and let people who are walking through Powell's and the gallery vote on the quilts they love the most. Um, and then of course, there will also be a random prize drawing from everybody who participated because, oh my gosh, you all put so much energy into these and they're so awesome. Um, and there'll be $25 gift certificates to Portland Quilt Supply, Powell's Book, Modern Domestic, or Cool Cottons. And People's Choice will be kind of first through third place and then our random choice. Um, I think that's- yep. That's about everything. I also wanted to mention that some people are really excited and they have made more than one, which is amazing because we have about, I think, 38 people signed up or all close to 40 and we have room for 80. So if you want to get wild, make a second or a third and you can get it to Casey in time. I'm not stopping you. Um, I did make a video. I, it's a uh, uh, we can it's fun so um with some of the previews because you guys have got to see the pictures like they, these 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 are cool these are cool I can't wait to see them all put together so this is just some of the pictures that we've gotten in the sign up sheet um look at that tiger that's hot right yeah nice 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 work so um I put together the, oops I put together that video I'm not great at videos I just hit it again Boop. stopping Anyways, that's it. Um, if you have any questions, post them in the chat. Uh, send a message to the Portland Modern Quilt Guild email, and I'll get them to Casey. And um, I will be there at the sew day in the morning. Uh, I'm the opener, and I think um, Casey's coming, like she said, in the afternoon. So if you show up and you don't see Casey, you can drop your quilt off with me. All right, next slide. Block of the month with Patty. Patty, are you here? Do you want to unmute? Am. Okay, cool. Unmute. This is Patty's first time publishing a pattern. We created the Block of the Month program this year so that we can um, get more members to be published. And basically, they design a block and then they work with me and Jenny McKee to do the technical editing. And we go back and forth and refine it. And this is Patty's jazzy block. It's a bit more technical. We have I've been building up for our toolbox and so this is like the pinnacle of it a kind of um well next next month is a little technical too and then it just like slides out but i'm really excited about this block patty can you tell us what your inspiration was about this well i was trying to design a block that had a curve in it that i could snake around to different things but i this was the first thing i, I ever made in eq8 yeah, so. <laughs> that secondary, that secondary designs, what she's talking about, like, it, I put a full all this is all the, those blocks. And you see how sometimes they connect and they create a secondary design, which is really fun. That's like, that's the money shot right there. That's my favorite. Thank you. All right, next slide. So I put together a couple different layouts. Uh, this pattern is published now. It's on our members only page in the members only section. Um, there's 
this one in the middle and then honestly I just love it by itself as well and then um, this is another uh, block pattern this is the 36 patch and this block here here is Chris's machine rising pattern which is going to be uh, our finale in September but here is Patty's glorious uh, jazzy block and you can see how it flows and it creates almost like a machine type like amazing intricate pattern or depending on your colorway it could look like tiles or tile work um, I just love it it's a really fun dynamic pattern thank you did, wait did you have anything else you wanted to say about it Patty no I've got my quilt in the of that block in the uh, show and tell I think oh yeah that's right it's in the show and tell yep okay Beverly time in are you here Beverly did you want to talk I'm here. Um, sure, I'll talk. Uh, so the uh, small groups, some of them are taking a little break for parts of the summer. Um, so Chris has been really good about uh, updating the calendar. And so I would recommend looking on the calendar just to double check. Uh, surface design is going to be off for June and July. Uh, Lunch Bunch will be is off in May. They'll be resuming uh, June 24th, but then they're gonna, going to take July and August off. Um, it's a lot to keep track of. So really it's a good idea to look at the calendar and figure out what's going on. Um, I heard Susan say that uh, community, act, uh, community and charity sewing is going to take May off. So um, yeah, so just check and please join us. Um, there's lots of groups. Lots of different things going on. Um, a little plug for the Sunday Sew Group. If you are new to the Guild or new to quilting, um, that one meets consistently every single week and they're not taking any time off. So uh, I highly recommend um, stopping by really nice people there and very, very helpful people. So. Yeah, I love that Sunday so day. If you are stumped or have questions, there are some very knowledgeable folks that just love to answer questions in that Sunday so day. So I, I recommend coming to that one and ask about it. And then um, Modern Pattern Designers is starting soon. We have sign up sheet, I think, in the members only section. Um, this is just a group. We have a lot of pattern designers in our guild because we're such a big guild. Um, you know, a lot of artists here in Portland. And um, we talk about different stuff. Some of us use EQ8, some of us use Illustrator, um, but a pattern design mostly forming a group to cheer each other on. So join our group. Yeah, and Sarah, uh, the improv group's log cabin prompt was for today's meeting. Next <laughs> month, um, so our next prompt is actually um, inserts, insert strips. So ah, and like in inset strips. Yeah, so like, like like thin little insets. Oh you can see that. yeah, kind oh like yeah. And we're going to be doing that. Um, this is one of the tutorials on Saturday at the virtual um, sewing. So if you don't know how to do that and you have time on Saturday, stop by. Thanks. Yes, another plug to stop by on Saturday, guys. I don't know what you're doing. Probably nothing, right? Hang out with Beverly on Zoom. I mean, she's fun. She's cool. Inset strips. I love it. Let's see. Next slide. Okay, QuiltCon challenge. Has anybody seen this? Did you get the email about this? So every year, um, QuiltCon uh, issues a, a community outreach challenge. It's a charity quilt, um, and they a, they have parameters around it. This year, they're doing it a little bit differently. So it's exciting. They're not saying you have to use this exact fabric, but they did give us a color palette options. But you can use your own fabric. So we're not sure how that's going to completely play out because usually we buy all the fabric and we make kits. But uh, the bottom line is here, we uh, need pattern designs. It's, let's see, the Community Outreach Challenge. Here is the website for it. Um, they The theme is color shift. So it can be any design where the color shifts. See these, how they work with the color shift. They offer two color palettes. So pick one or the other. Um, they want at least three color stops. You don't have to use all, what is this, 10 or 12? You, know, you could use just three if you want, whatever you want. Um, so they want you to design the quilt. They want it to be, uh, must be twin size 65 by 85 up to what we're looking for uh, with uh, this guild we're looking for pattern design so if you want to create a pattern design for the quilt con uh, charity quilt um, and send it to the guild uh, we're hoping that people can do that now between now and June 16th the next guild meeting and we're going to have a guildwide vote at the next meeting June 16th we'll put it up and we'll talk about them and then we'll vote um, so and then we're going to create kits signups and distribute those kits in July Amory Callie is super nice and she's agreed to uh, quilt 
this, but we got to get everything to her by late September, early October. We have a deadline of September for the blocks. So um, if you have any questions about this, just reach out to the guild, or if you have a friend that may be in the guild that's been here longer and you want to ask them, they could give information. Um, so yeah, that's the, the we're at with the community community outreach challenge. All right. Next slide, MQG Journal is out. Uh, some of us are a local only option. Some of us are also the MQG. They have fresh patterns out. These are some fresh stuff. This is, this is a free pattern. They talk about journaling. Um, this hot tote bag, which is really cute. Tote bags are so hot right now. Um, I would definitely recommend checking it out. And um, they have some videos and things and tutorials. So um, that's, I think all I have about that. The next is show and tell. Nadia, you wanna do show and tell? Yes, I do want to do show and tell. Awesome. Okie dokie. I'm ready. Here we go. Block of the month. Who's this is Patty, Patty, not me. Patty. Patty's okay. doing this slide. Um, I guess my picture is in the center of the templates I used for my quilt. Um, and what I did was um, you, you don't have to, but I sent uh, freezer paper through the uh, printer to print the, well, I got two of them. <laughs> they started jamming after that, uh, print them. And then what I do is you iron freezer paper because it will shrink. And then you layer it all up into something kind of thick and the top one becomes the freezer paper or just take glue stick and glue on your Xerox copy. And then use, you, you can kind of tell, I have an eighth hole punch that I got from Michael's and I punched where the important points were on the templates, the, the corners and two punches. So I had the line of what's the center so that Oops. when I pin, it can match. But my husband, Mr. Expert, does it without pinning. Ah, <laughs> I don't know. I think that hole punch tip is, yeah, that's, that's smart. That's, yes, that's my nugget for tonight. Awesome. I show my quote next month? Sure. Okay. <laughs> With Patty, yeah. <laughs> you guys can sort that out. <laughs> okay, next Patty again. And then with QuiltCon, you know there's a mini swap that you can opt to swap at QuiltCon. I wasn't sure what the <laughs> numbers of COVID would be at the time. So I opted to swap outside of QuiltCon. And uh, this was the quilt that I made and sent to my swap partner. Um, it's based on a technique I saw for a much smaller half square triangle, but I blew it up to make a big one. <laughs> That's beautiful. Look at those matching seams. Holy Moses. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Patty. Is there anything else you'd like to share about that one? Oh, we're on to you again. Okay. And I swapped with someone who has an Etsy shop and it's called Summer Sage on um, her Instagram is squats and running stitches I think and this is the one she sent to me nice nice that's gorgeous too and then this this is the back of the um what I call jazz in the vineyard which uses the jazzy block and because improv group had a uh, cat improv cabin log cabin block I made up four really fast and threw them on the back nice and then you can see my quilting shows some grape vines or grape bunches of grapes grape leaves and if you look closely there's musical notes buried in there because the quilt is called jazz in the vineyard oh that is so awesome that quilting so fabulous I love improv too special place in my heart for the improv <laughs> Thank you for sharing. What a what a amount of work. Holy. Do we have the front of the quilt? No, I don't know. I uh, don't. I'm sorry. I don't know where it is. Maybe it didn't get uploaded. Hmm. We'll we'll show it next time. Okay. Sorry. Love the puppies. <laughs> Okie dokie. Next one, Chris. Should I unmute myself? Uh, this is a quilt that I designed. Um, I think I initially designed it in March. Uh, this is the third rendition of this pattern, and I released it at the end of April, and I was really excited about it. So it's just a poison apple made with all fat quarters, so it gives kind of that scrappy look. 
is this the one that brought you to Instagram fame, TikTok fame? The TikTok fame, yes. <laughs> it was Love very it. popular on TikTok. <laughs> That's awesome. Great job. Thank we you. loved your interview in Portland Monthly. That was so cool. And thanks for the guild shout out. Wonderful. Awesome. Next slide, please. Marcy. Oh, hello. Um, this was uh, some t-shirts. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, uh, my sister-in-law is a uh, counselor out in Beaverton and one of her students had lost their father and there were two kids. And so she asked me if I would make some, a quilt from some shirts. Well, then she brought me t-shirts <laughs> and, you know, if any of you have ever worked with t-shirt quilts, it's a lot of ironing and I, I, it was just fun. So these, this was one of them. There was two of them. This was the rock and roll t-shirt. And then there was another one that was all Hawaiian t-shirts. Hmm. Um, and I quilted it kind of, I did it quilt by square. So each square has a backing so that when I sewed it all together I just had to do some very basic lines down it but um you know we're quilters and I kind of believe that uh quilts have a healing power and uh there was nothing I think I would like better as a teenager than to have a quilt of all the t-shirts that my father wore so this went to them and um I I think she really liked them I believe she did awesome really nice Thank you. Thanks for sharing. Next slide, please. Deb. Deb made this for me. She gave me this quilt. Is Deb here? Does she want to talk about her quilt? I am, um, oh, I'm glad you love it. It was so fun. She was going to give it away to charity and I messaged her. I'm like, can <laughs> I be your charity? <laughs> no. <laughs> Hey, Deb. So yes, this was made with your small group. It, it was done. Yeah, it was done with, um, we did the ugly pot holders or slash mittens. Mm -hmm. And I just thought it was, I didn't have enough, obviously to, I didn't really want to do a pillow. I didn't want to do um, something small. So I thought oh, I'm going to add all my scrappies to it. And I think it turned out really fun. So I'm glad Sarah loved it. And it found a home with her. It's lovely. I, I love it. I get so sentimental about like group quilts. I can't, I can't. It's just like, it's oh, not awesome. recreatable. It's an original. You can't ever make another one. I get so sentimental about like things that my <laughs> friends have used their hands to stitch. And so I just needed it. So I, I didn't want to be too aggressive, but like, I'm really glad that she, she was <laughs> kind and gave me this quilt. I'll, I'm, I'm going to make her one. Like, it's not like, it's not like I'm just taking, I'm giving her one too. <laughs> It, it reminds me of, of the happy vision of, you know, a kindergarten class and all their mittens and hats jumbled together on a snowy day. That. That's, that's the feeling I get from it. Just, you know, um, innocent joy. Anyway. Yeah, it's just, it's it. just for me. I love it. It's mine. And I love it so much. Thank you so much. Thanks for sharing, You're Deb. Welcome. You're welcome. And I think that's it for the show and tell. I had a pretty busy day today and it was an early quilt guild. So if you sat in a show and tell today, um, I didn't get to it. So I think that's the last one. All right, we want to welcome some new members. Um, new membership keeps on rolling in. Every week we get new members. We have Cece Beckwith, Tan Young Barnes, and Larissa Dr Jeffries. So thanks for joining us. I hope they're here. Next slide. Okay, help wanted. Um, the summer picnic team, we're having a summer picnic uh, in July. If you want to help with that, that'd be great. Um, this year we are offering almost every single time we have an in-person something, we're offering an online option as well. So there will be an online option that day. So I'm looking for help with that. Uh, QuiltCon charity quilt volunteers. Emory Cali does this for us almost every year. It's almost in a disproportionate amount of work and she's really great, but it would be great if she got some help. Uh, we need help, you know, creating kits and um, just organizing it, um, being the lead person just to type up information email and send out that's the kind of help we need also I need help um, designing it and you know we did the block of the month uh, design team as a team this year so if you want to design a, a full quilt you can just design it like with a sketch and 
pencil and paper and we will help you write we will write the pattern like you don't have to be a professional designer you can just sketch something with some you know uh coloring uh utensils so that you show the color shift but you don't be intimidated we want this to be um you know made by um one of our own so we need that uh, a new member mixer we're doing that um at the same time as the summer picnic um scholarship fundraiser quilt lead i want to talk about that for a second um like i talked about very quickly sorry for i was excited I, that's why i got i talked too fast i should be star that was super cool uh okay scholarship fundraiser quilt lead here's what's happening um we are creating a scholarship um project like paperwork we don't have anything written down on paper and with that the people that are looking at the scholarship program are seeing where there are some holes and also in um, a alliance with our dia work of um, wanting to be inclusive for that so with the scholarship uh, project right now we're looking at bulking that up in the in the next year uh, we're going to be asking people that are scholarship recipients uh, what they want of course like what is the inhibitors to joining us in the modern quilt making movement and we want them to be included and they want we want them here making quilts with us so we're going to have some things like a fabric stash where we send uh, scholarship recipients fabric if they want it um, we're going to be bumping up the amount of um, scholarships people can do for workshops next year um, so these things take funds and uh, we don't have a lot of funds going into the scholarship fund right now they kind of trickle in um, so just looking at what the scholarship policy planning committee is doing their work for the scholarship program next year they're going to need some funds and in the past we've done little fundraisers for the scholarship um, co uh, committee and uh, planning and so that's what we're looking at uh, for this year, similar to the Ukraine uh, quilt that uh, Marsha is running. Um, I can't ask her to do it. She already did an amazing job. Somebody else got her through it. Um, collecting blocks, putting them together as a uh, as a quilt, and then um, having a fundraiser for tickets to win the quilt. So that's what we're looking at. And if you're interested at all um, with that, I would appreciate it. Even if you just have ideas and want to send your ideas, send them to the guild. Um, things that have been successful in the past is like those ruby star economy blocks that's really cool something like that okay uh sunshine and Sh shadows uh volunteer i went to the mqg leadership uh meeting last week and other guilds have this they have a sunshine and shadows uh committee um i don't think this needs a lot of explanation just in case it does here it goes um the purpose of it is to increase a sense of community we join a guild because we're joining a sense of community um a sunshine and shadows uh committee you know that person uh just organizes if someone has a baby they send them a quilt if someone has an illness they send them a quilt if you know, maybe if someone just wants some has uh i don't know some other problems they, they drop off uh, some soup or something we'd have a small budget for it but i need somebody else to lead it up my board committee team has put their foot down and i'm not allowed to lead anything else this year so i need somebody else to do it um cut it up challenge i don't know if tamra's here but gosh if you're here tamra i hope you're listening or you watch the video late, later tamra did this amazing thing cut it up challenge you take some of your orphan blocks or half done project you put it into a paper bag you bring it to a guild meeting you set it on a table and then you go pick somebody else's bag and you take it home and you slice it up and make something else we really want to do this we are planning on doing an october hybrid meeting um like i said i went to the mqg leadership planning uh, uh, meeting last week. Other guilds are doing high res, so I got some hot tips on how they're doing it. So we're working on having an in-person meeting that's also going to be um, on Zoom, so you don't have to go. But um, at that in-person meeting, we'd love to have a cut it up challenge where people can pick up things and um, and cut it up. Um, Tamara did an amazing job last year. I don't know if she wants to do it again. Probably not, but maybe. Or somebody else wants to do it. So get at me if you're thinking about that. Um, the rainbow challenge, it's going amazing. People are having a super great time. One thing we are noticing with people is that there's been like some like hesitance or almost self-esteem issues when you're only making stuff on your own. People are like, I don't know if it's good enough. I'm not sure it's totally good enough. But one way to get around feeling like your stuff isn't good enough is if you do it as a group quilt. So the rainbow challenge was a tight timeline this year. We wanna start it earlier next year for next year. So we're looking at a November launch, having an option of it also being mini 
clothes because those are super hot. But also you could have a team of four to six people and make a group rainbow quilt because I think there's plenty of room. And um, Marcy McFarlane is doing an amazing job getting us Powell's book. She has a couple other secondary locations at a coffee shop. So uh, that's where we're working on that. And we're looking for somebody to join that committee. Okay, so next slide, fidget blankets. We're doing this for uh, local hospice Alzheimer's patients. We've made 23 so far. Our goal is 100. Uh, Chris has promised he's going to do a tutorial video like super soon. And uh, you can pick these things up on Marika's port. She lives in Selwood. It's really accessible. We're also going to have the kids at the sew day on 21st. So there's kids to pick up. Um, they're really easy to make. They're for uh, Kai hospice patients so um we're hoping to make 100 we made 23 so look for that and let's see last thing oh the search continues why i talk about this because the mqg told me to karen cooper the executive director of the mqg said i need to talk about this ad nauseum that's what she said so we're looking for a meeting 2023 we have a small list but if you know of a hot place let us know it's going to be a high likelihood of a hybrid meeting meaning we're going to be on zoom and in person um we're doing a guild-wide vote survey coming soon um we are creating the survey and i just want to preface this with probably none of us are professional survey makers so if you don't like the survey or if the questions aren't perfect sorry we're not professionals, we're just volunteers. Um, but the survey is coming out. We're probably going to send it out next week. So fill up the survey and let us know. We're looking for an open and affirming location. St. Andrews was really good to our guild for many, many years. Lighting and Wi Fi is lacking for that location. I don't know if it's because it's built for the for earthquake status or if it's also a bomb shelter, but I'm, I, on my phone, I get no signal in there. And we need a good signal in there. We need good lighting and wi-fi also the parking is as um uh, the parking lot is not very well lit and the sidewalks are a bit cracked and we want it to be accessible to all members so that's what we're looking at um also next year something to think about because you will be voting for this in the survey a lot of professional speakers are um they don't want to travel anymore they're like, why? I can just Zoom. You can just pay me my, you know, four or five hundred dollars, and you we just do it on Zoom. Versus paying them to fly in the port and pick them up at the airport, Airbnb, per diem. The volunteer has to hang out with them all weekend and drive them everywhere and get them lunch and things and this, this, this and that. So we're seeing more of the professionals in the industry just want to be doing online stuff. Of course, we want to pepper that with different things, but. I don't know the way it's shaping up now I think it's going to be hybrid um, like I said there's a volunteer uh, committee uh, for that we have a spreadsheet we're looking at places so if you have anything let us know all right almost done last slide guys here we are we did it so day May 21st 10 to 4 there's an online option to charity quilt so day you don't want to miss this cath hall is really fun if you go to this so day or the charity quilt so day I guarantee you will learn something that you didn't expect. Charity Quilts drop off May 28th on Cath House porch. She has fabric, she has patterns, she has things. If you have a top you want, then drop it off to her. Our next meeting is June 16th with Ben Venom. He is super cool. This is what he doesn't talk to guilds very often. So he might a little bit um, different um, and quirky. He has um, a workshop on June 19th. It's on sale now. Like I mentioned, we have 13 spots left. And hey, guys, maybe um, I just want to let you know that we're not selling out of our workshops this year for lots of reasons. So if you could help us out by reposting it and sending it to your friends, that would be great um, because we want to be uh, prudent with spending guild funds. And if we're not selling um, workshops or we're letting the guild lose money, we're looking at doing less workshops in the future. So I just want to put that out there that um, if you see workshops starting to get canceled, it's because we don't, we don't want to, we want, we feel obligated. We all want to do a good job and we don't want to mess up with the guild money. Okay. Uh, and about that charity cool. So today, June 30th. So um, Kath Hall is doing this last Thursday. So she's got Jude and May set up at Modern Domestic, the Alberta location. And the next one is the summer picnic and new member mixer, July 23rd, the Washougal River. River. Um, we're suggesting carpooling. Some really smart person, I think it was Allison, suggested parking at the Pendleton Woolen Mills store and then uh, carpooling from there. Uh, we are going to 
have an online op uh, option. And with uh, new members, we've got some goodies and things in store. But that's about it. So that's the May meeting, guys. Yay, we did it. <laughs> We're halfway through the year. We are cruising now. We are cruising. We're on the downhill slope. So stay, uh, turn your video on, chat, ask me any questions. Um,